Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve for factors and multiples. Factors and multiples. When dealing with factors and multiples, there's some things that you could keep in mind that'll help you remember how to differentiate the two. I know that a lot of students forget which is a factor and which is a multiple. So here's a little trick that I put together that I always taught my students to help them remember. Factors fall. Okay. If somebody were to tell you that something is falling, does that make you think of something getting bigger or smaller? I would think that it would make you think that something's getting smaller if you had to deal with, um, you know, the size of something, which I know the, the word fall isn't exactly meaning smaller, but um, it, it seems closer to fit a number getting smaller. So I use factors fall as a reminder to say that the numbers are smaller than the original number. The factors are smaller than the original number. Multiples are more. I use that to explain that multiples are always more than the original number. So if you remember factors fall and multiples are more, that may help you remember how to differentiate between the two. Let's jump into example number one so I can show you how I write factors and multiples of a number. Example number one, we have the number 20. When writing factors, I usually say you want to start with the first counting number. When I say counting number, I mean the number that you learn to count with. You don't learn to count with zero. A mom doesn't tell her baby, hey, let's count. Zero, one, two, three. No, you don't start to count like that. When you learn to count, you start with one. You say, okay, let's learn our numbers. Let's count. One, two, three. Okay, so we're going to start with the counting numbers. So that means we're just going to go in order and every number that can evenly go into whatever number we're talking about, which in this case is 20, we're going to write it down and then we're going to write a multiplication sign and we're going to write the number that you would multiply by to get 20. For example, the first counting number is 1. 1 times what would give you 20? And the answer to that is 20. Now, directly underneath our 1, I always write the next counting number. Only if it applies. Only if I can find a number that I can multiply it by to get the original number. So, after 1, the next counting number that a mom would teach her baby. So, we go 1, then we go 2. 2 is the next counting number. Can 2 times something give me 20? Yeah. So I'm going to write it. 2 times what? 2 times 10. 2 times 10 gives me 20. Now, after 2, the next counting number is 3. Can 3 times anything give me 20? No, it cannot. Okay, so you do not write 3 down. You go on to the next counting number. We have 4. Can 4 times anything give me 20? Yes. 4 times 5. So you write it down. Now, I already know that I have listed all of my factors here. How do I know? Because the next number after 4 would be 5, but we already have 5. All of the numbers that are on the outside are my factors. My 1, my 2, my 4, my 5, my 10, and my 20. These are all factors of 20. When you're going down your counting numbers, you automatically end up listing the higher numbers that are also factors. So 20, 10, and 5 are all factors of 20. I like to call this my horseshoe shape. I like to refer to this as a horseshoe shape because if I wanted to list my factors out in order from least to greatest, I would go in a horseshoe shape from left to right and that would give me all my factors for 20 in order from least to greatest. So I'll do that actually. 20. I like to draw a colon and 1. And we have 2. And we have 4. 5 is next. 
then 10, then 20. So the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. So let's recap here. We started with our counting numbers. We listed them in the number that you could multiply by to get your original number. We know when to stop when the next number in our counting number sequence is already listed on the right side. So after 4 we would have gone with 5, but guess what? We didn't need to write 5 down because it was already listed. That means we're done. I'll tell you something. Sometimes at the bottom your numbers will be double. For example, if we had the number 100, at some point you would get to 10 times 10. When your numbers are double, that also means it's time to stop and you have listed all your numbers as long as you didn't skip a counting number that went into it. So the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Okay? Factors fall, so all of these numbers, except for 20 itself, which that's fine because it's itself, are smaller. Factors fall, so fall makes me think smaller. 2 is smaller than 20, 4 is smaller than 25, 10, they're smaller than 20. I'll also add that the number 1 is always, always, always a factor of any number. 1 times any number is always going to get you that number. So your first factor should always be one times whatever number you're talking about. Okay, I'm going to draw a line here. If I wanted to list the multiples of 20, what would I do? I also like to start with a 20 and a colon here to start my multiples as well. And I always start with itself. So I'm going to start with 20. Now, to list my multiples, all I do is add the number to the last number that I left off with. In the beginning here, I start with 20, so I'm going to add 20 to itself, and I get 40. Now remember, we're adding our original number to whatever number we left off with, so we just ended up with 40. I'm going to add another 20 to that, and I get 60. Add another 20 to 60 and I get an 80. Add another 20 to that and I get 100. Guess what? I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I've listed my first five multiples of 20. And the reason I'm going to stop here is because I have to stop someplace. But because numbers never end, you could literally do this all day long. There is no stopping point. Multiples go on forever. I could always add 20 to any number that I have. So no matter how big my number is, I can always just add 20 to it and another 20 and another 20 and 20 and 20. And then we go on forever. So we don't do that. Typically, if you're finding the multiples um, to a number that's given in your math book on our worksheet, the directions will say list the first five multiples or the first six multiples or the first ten multiples they are going to give you a stopping point because multiples go on forever so just for clarification I will write factors multiples And again, our multiples are more than the number. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. These numbers are larger than 20, except for the 20. It is equal to it. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two. We have the number 24. So let's start off by listing our factors first. If you remember, with our last example, we start with our counting numbers when it's time to list the factors. So the first counting number is 1 and really 
anytime we're listing factors, one times whatever your number is, is always, always, always going to be a factor, no matter what. Because remember, any number times one is always itself. So that's always going to be a factor. The next counting number after one is two. Two can go into 24 evenly. It goes into it 12 times. So two and 12 are also factors of 24. The next counting number after two is three. Can three go into 24? Yes. Three times eight is 24. The next counting number after three is four. Four can also go into 24 evenly. It can go into it six times. So four and six are also factors of 24. The next counting number is five. Five cannot go into 24. So five should not be listed. Okay. The next counting number after five is six. Oh, look at this. Six is already listed. So we do not need to continue. And this is a sign to let me know that I have listed all of my factors. Just like before, I like to go in a horseshoe shape around my numbers. Um, this picks up the numbers in order from least to greatest. So my factors for 24 are 1. I'm going in my horseshoe shape. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. These are the factors of 24. Let's move on to the multiples of 24. The multiples of 24 are still pretty easy to calculate. You start off with your original number, 24, and you just add it to itself. So 24 plus 24 is 48. 48 plus 24 is 72. 72 plus 24 is 96. And so on to 120 to 144. And remember, you just have to stop somewhere when listing the multiples. Usually your book or your teacher or your worksheet is going to tell you how far to go. It'll say list five multiples of the number, list eight multiples of the number. And then you're going to stop because I could always add another 24. Multiples never end, so you must stop somewhere. Factors do end. You can collect all of the factors. You cannot collect all of the multiples. Let's move on to example number three. Example number three. I have the number 17. Let's list the factors of 17. Start with the counting numbers. 1 times 17. Guess what? That's it. The number 17 is prime. Okay. When dealing with prime numbers, you are only going to have one factor, one set of factors. It's going to be one times itself. That always works, but there are no other number combinations that can be multiplied together besides 1 and 17 to get 17. That means 17 is prime. The reason we list here that 17 has no factors or prime means no factors is because 1 times whatever number is always going to work as a factor. So we don't really count one in the number as being factors so much because that's always going to be the case. We really are looking for numbers that have factors other than that. But although 17 is prime, it does still have multiples. You can always add a number to itself. So multiples are never affected because you can always add it to itself. So the multiples of 17 would be 17, then you add 17 to that and you get 34, add another 17, you get 51, then 68, 85, and 102. These are the factors and multiples of 17. Let's move on to example number 4. 81. Let's list the factors. We're always going to start with this, 1 times itself, that's 1 times 81. 2 cannot go into 81. 3 can go into 81. The next counting number that goes in is 9. And guess what? 9 times 9 goes into 81. 
Whenever you have double numbers like this, that means that the number you're dealing with is a perfect square, which is really a more advanced topic than we're going to get into for this particular lesson. But double numbers like this means that you can stop and you don't need to go on with your counting numbers. You have listed all the factors unless you miss something in your initial counting numbers. The multiples of 81 are 81, 162, 243, 324, 405, 486, and so on. You would just continue to add 81 as long as you need to, as long as your directions want you to. Example number five, we have 36. The factors of 36 are 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. Oh, here's another example of a perfect square. We have 6 times 6. That means 36 is a perfect square. Let's list the multiples of 36. We have 36, 72, 108, 144, 180, 216. To continue, we would just add 36 again. Example number 6. Factors of 50. We have 1 times 50. We also have 2 times 25. 5 times 10, and that's it. Between 5 and 10, none of the counting numbers can go into 50, so none of them get listed. 6 cannot go into 50 evenly, 7 cannot, 8 cannot, neither can 9. So 10 would be your next counting number, and so it was already listed when you're with your 5 times 10, so you're done. Multiples of 50 are 50, 100, 120, 200, 250, 300, and so on. So just remember, factors fall and multiples are more. The factors of 50, these numbers are all smaller than 50, and multiples, these numbers are all larger than 50s. That's my biggest tip to you to help you make sure you do not get the two of these mixed up. That's my last example. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.